In this video tutorial, we're going to take a look, look at a counting rule called the rule of sum. So let's start with this first example. At an international conference, either six or seven countries may attend. And you, the question is, in how many different orders could their flags be flown? So the rule of sum is for when there's different uh, ways or often lengths of or amount of something that can be arranged. So in this case, there could be six countries and we'll count up how many ways the flags could be arranged if there's six countries, but there could also be seven. There could be a seventh country come, and then that would change the no total number of ways the flags could be arranged. Normally, they have a, a line of poles, and then they would put one fl uh, country's flag on each one. So if there were six countries attending, the flags could be arranged in six factorial ways. We could put placeholders here, six of them, and the first could be chosen in six ways times the next one could be chosen in five ways times the next one could be chosen in four ways, all the way down to the last flag. And so we multiply six by five by four by three by two by one, which is six factorial. So if there's six countries come to the conference, their flags could be arranged in 720 ways. But if seven countries attend, the count becomes a little bit larger because the first flag, flag can be arranged in seven ways times six for the next, times five for the next, etc., which is seven factorial. You could also call this a permutation of six objects taken six at a time, and this one, seven permute seven. That, that's the same thing. Seven factorial is the same as seven permute seven. And so this is number of ways if six countries come, this is number of ways if seven countries come, the total number of way would be the sum of the two, because before the conference attends, we don't know how many are going to be there, either six or seven. So we would add the 5,040 and 720, so there's 5,760 possible ways the, the flags could be arranged in order, different orders. So the, we're going to talk, uh, and we're going to talk about in this next example the principle of inclusion and exclusion, and that's for when you have sets with some overlap. And so, in this, this second example, four people are playing the game Pass the Ace. Each player receives a single card in that game, and the question is: In how many ways could the cards be all face cards, or all black cards? Now, this is a permutation counting question because. There's four people, so let's say that my, my, I'm one of them and you're another one. So if, for example, I get the seven of clubs and you get the king of diamonds, okay, you get the king of diamonds, it's different than if instead of that, you get the seven of clubs and I get the king of diamonds. If you change the order of the same cards, you get a different arrangement of cards. So that's why this is a permutation question. So I've got this Venn diagram. I'm not going to put individual objects here, but just to show you why we need the principle of inclusion and exclusion here. So let's let this uh, set here represent the face cards, and then this will be the black cards. And in the middle, we would have cards that are both face cards or black cards. So we would call them black face cards. And that's exactly what the black face cards are. They're the jack, queen, king of clubs, and spades. So there are six of these. So to count the total number of ways that all the cards could be face cards or all the cards could be black cards, we're going to use permutations. So first of all, the face cards, there are 12 of them. And so we're selecting four of the 12. So these four people could get uh, four face cards of the 12 possible face cards. Plus, 26 permute four, see the black cards right here, uh, there are 26 of them all together. There's there's uh, 13 clubs and 13 spades, so half the deck is black cards. And so the people are getting four of them. So that's the number of ways we have we can have all face cards. This is the number we can have all the uh, all black cards. And in adding those together, we've actually counted these ones here uh, doubly. We've counted them twice. So we would have to subtract from this the number of ways we could pick four cards from these. So there are six cards here, so if there's six cards, and we're taking four of them, because four people are each getting one card, then there'd be six permute four ways of taking four cards from that set that's being double counted. So the uh, permutation 12 permute four works out to be 1180, and I'm going to do this calculation on the uh, calculator here, so let me just bring my calculator over just to show you how this works. So uh, 12, and the way the graphing calculator works. Okay, there's my permutation function. So 12 permute 4, 
that's where the 11,880 comes from. And then I have 26 per mute 4, so I'm going to just going to change the first number to 26. So that's where the, uh, oh, here we go, 358,800 comes from. And then 6 per mute 4. So I'll just go over here and delete the 2. So this last number here will be 360. And of course, so we would go 11,880 plus 358800 and then subtract the 360, the double counted cards. So 370,320 ways. So that's the number of ways the cards could be all face cards or all black cards. Now it might sound like a lot, a lot of cards, a lot of ways to do that. But it's really not. If you think of the entire deck, there's 52 cards. And how many ways can you take four of them? Well, there's actually almost six and a half million. So this 370,000 might seem like a, a, a big number, but it's actually relatively small because there's almost six and a half million ways of taking four cards of the 52. Okay, so that's really not that large a number. So flip over to uh, example three here. Um, a group of seven people sit together at a high school graduation ceremony. And in the first uh, question here it says, how many ways can they sit together? So uh, we're just putting them in a row, seven people. So the uh, we're arranging seven objects or seven people and we're using all of them. So it's actually a permutation of seven objects taken seven at a time. So it would be 7 factorial. If you actually did the placeholder thing like this, uh, the first person could be chosen in 7 ways, and it doesn't matter where you start. If we could start here, if we could start in the middle if you wanted to. Uh, the first one can be chosen in 7 ways. We've, we've uh, got uh, one person sitting there. So the next person could be chosen in 6 ways, times next person could be chosen in 5 ways, 4, 3, 2, 1, which is 7 factorial. So there's 5,040 ways for these people to sit in a row in different orders. Now in B it says, how many ways can they sit together if two people must sit next to each other? So maybe there's a couple or two friends that want to sit together. So what you do in a situation like this, and I'm going to circle the first two here or put them in the box, is you treat that couple or pair of people like one thing. So it's like that's one thing we're going to keep together. So we've got this one thing and then we've got five other people. So we've actually we're arranging now uh, six objects, the pair, and then five other individuals. So it's like arranging six objects. So it would actually just be a, a permutation of six objects taken six at a time. And we would multiply that by two because those two people can actually sit in two different ways. Let's say this is John and this is Mary. John can be here, Mary can be here, or we can switch them, put Mary there and John here. So we can, uh, those two people can be arranged in two ways. It's actually two factorial. But 2 factorial equals 2, so I'll just write 2. So uh, 6 per mute 6 is 720, then we multiply that by 2. There's 1,440 ways that that could occur. So if two people sit together. Now in the last question here, it says, how many ways can the people sit if two people must not six, sit next to one another? Uh, it's like, you know, maybe there's a couple here and they've had an argument, so they don't want to sit together now. Or two people that you know, for some reason, just do not want to be next to one another. So, you see, the 5,040 up here is the total number of ways, no restrictions whatsoever, like the size of the entire sample space. And the 1,440 is the number of ways that two people can be together. See, the two people either have to be together, like in B here, or not. Between those two kinds of arrangements, that would be everything, the whole 5,040. So there are, there is actually a very long way to do this. You could have, for example, one person between them and figure that out. You could put two people between them and figure that out, three people between them and figure that out, etc. Or you could actually just take the entire number and subtract the number of ways that they would be sitting together, and that'll give you the number of ways that they would not could not be seen together. So if you take the total, the 7 factorial, and subtract from it the uh, the answer from B here, see this would be the 1440, so that would give you, if you subtract these, 3600 ways. 
So there's 3,600 ways that people, two people, a certain two people could not sit next to one another, 1,440 ways they could, and between the two of those, see, those two events actually are mutually exclusive. They have nothing in common. Uh, the two people either are sitting right next to one another or they're not, and between the two of those, that would give you the total here. And that's the end of the tutorial.